Would and you support a charge? If I, if I want solar on my roof, mm -hmm. um, is it fair for me to pay $10 a month uh, mm -hmm. to help support the lines and the grid so that when, when the sun's not mm -hmm. shining, I, I have yeah. access to the grid? I mean, would you support something like that so, as a matter of policy? So the best, the best studies that we've seen uh, uh, you know, which were done most exhaustively in California and Arizona, mm -hmm. um, conclude that at, uh, particularly at these levels of penetration, there is a net benefit to non-solar rate payers when they install a solar system. So when I put a solar system on my roof, mm -hmm. it is absolutely the case um, that there is a cost uh, to, for instance, you know, SCE, uh, where, uh, you know, they're buying my net metered power at the retail price. Okay. It's also the case that because I've installed a solar system on my roof, uh, less transmission needs to get built, uh, transformers last longer, NOx and SOx pollution credit prices go down, okay. the renewable portfolio standard is closer to being met, and there are all these costs and benefits occur. And sort of what's happening is that, you know, a solar homeowner has uh, privatized investment that a public utility would otherwise need to make rate base, mm -hmm. earn an ROE, and socialize. Okay. And so the question is, what's more, the cost or the benefit? I want to bring Ted in because obviously, mm -hmm. um, but just to make sure. You can just keep talking to Edward on this. <laughs> <laughs> net benefit, you're saying uh, a private so, uh, homeowner provides a net benefit, but real quickly, I want to see if mm -hmm. I can get you to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm assuming you would not support some sort of monthly charge on the bill for a solar homeowner. That that's, as a matter of policy, you're not, you would not be in favor of that. I, I abs we absolutely are not. That okay. said, we have worked with utilities in certain circumstances mm -hmm. where you know, we think you know, rate structures reasonably could be improved. And in the context of a um, you know, full process to look at rates generally, you know, there are changes that can reasonably be made and that we can reasonably support. So uh, Ted, let me ask you, uh, first of all, where do you come down on this issue of net benefit? Uh, and about three things you, you can respond to here. Uh, net benefit, um, but also this, how would you like to see, what, is a $10 or something of that nature charge reasonable? And of course, um, uh, Edward also mentioned a, a nuclear power plant in Southern uh, California, which I know you guys are, uh, was 80% owner of. So if you wanna talk about that and, and, and respond to yeah. that as well, please go right ahead. So maybe just to stay on the solar for, the, for the moment. Um, I, I think our view is Solar users, or really any distributed generation users, are going to actually uh, use the grid more than they were using it before. So if you have a solar installation and you end up generating excess energy, you need to have some place for that to go, and mm -hmm. you put it back into the grid, you sell it back into the grid. Uh, if you are uh, a, a wind, if, if you have wind generation, any type of intermittent resource, you're actually using the grid more than people who simply draw from the grid their electric usage. So you're putting electricity in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out. <clears throat> and the, the system needs to be able to accommodate that. So we come at it more from the standpoint that, uh, again, this is a system, a network that mm -hmm. we believe facilitates all of these different types of technologies, which is important. We want to make sure that it can do that. It will require additional upgrades to the distribution system as well as if it's inland. So a uh, fee perhaps to help pay for those upgrades? So is that a reasonable policy? The last part. I'm sorry.